they have shown political resistance or political struggle, a spirit for that, a desire for that, and also political consciousness and awareness. And on the creation of that political consciousness and con in concretizing that in the form of political resistance, what has been the role of Netaji, especially during the period when he emerged as the leader, Netaji, in Calcutta? You see, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was a very keen student of political history. And uh, on the basis of a very critical analysis of Indian history, uh, he came to the conclusion that uh, there could not be, fundamentally speaking, any compromise, any compromise, any sort of a compromise between British imperialism and the rising Indian nationalism. And in order to achieve that, see, there cannot be any compromise with imperialism. And in a broad sense, he put it in simple terms like this, that the greatest crime for a man is to compromise with injustice and wrong. So I think since the days of the Bengal Renaissance, through the partition and the series of movements which we have seen since, till the attainment of independence, what has characterized Calcutta and the Calcutta's common man is this spirit, this spirit not to compromise with injustice and wrong. And I think the best symbol, the best embodiment of this spirit was Shuhash Chandra Bose. So when we observe Calcutta's tercentenary, it is against our interest, and if I may say so, it is not in our interest to forget Shuhash Chandra Bose. Uh, on the day on which Nitaji left Calcutta in 1941, and as the celebrated um, event of his leaving, and which I believe that you were with him on that day. What was the day like? What was the mood like? What was the situation like when you went out of this house in that car on the streets of Calcutta on that, at that historic moment, if you could describe that particular day and those moments? It was Netaji's uh, faith that uh, in order to achieve anything big, anything great, in order to achieve a real ideal, you see, that one has to set be, one has set before himself. You see, you have to be you have to have what he called the one-pointed determination, a single-minded determination, and you cannot be deflected from that aim by any other consideration. So when it came to a final battle with imperialism. He was prepared to take every possible risk, so to say, leave everything behind and take the plunge into the unknown and go forward. So what you now and we ordinarily called the great escape of Netaji. I would like to sort of rephrase it and call it the great advance towards the creation of a new India rather than an escape, you see. So that was the spirit which animated him. I saw this spirit, this single-minded determination in his physique, in his mind, in his face drama, but he was perfectly calm. Netaji himself was perfectly calm. I was very tense, but because uh, I was myself a very diffident person, I was at least outwardly very calm. And uh, he had planned the entire escape to the minutest detail. from 
the exit from his room, which you can see upstairs, to his departure or crossing the Indian frontier a few days later. Every detail was worked out. So he was supremely confident and when he came down, what infected me was that confidence. We went out of the house after coming down the corridor and the staircase on tiptoe and driving out of the house in a most natural fashion. We confidently drove two nights to reach Gomo station so that you, you could catch the train to Peshawar. As a citizen of Calcutta, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people have spoken about the life of Calcutta, that Calcutta is a very much a living city. For you, where does the life of Calcutta reside? What, what is that in Calcutta which makes it a living city? Uh, I'm afraid I have a slightly different opinion. What is being put out as the life of Calcutta is for the most part temporary and short-lived exuberance. What to me is the life of Calcutta is what I have already spelled out to you. That is a spirit of resistance to injustice and wrong. And on this occasion, on the occasion of the centenary of Calcutta, we, the citizens of Calcutta, must remember this, that if Calcutta has to live, if the citizens of Calcutta have to live, we have to maintain and keep alive this spirit, this spirit of resistance to injustice and wrong. That would be the greatest tribute to Calcutta's history and Calcutta's future. Let me say this, that uh, what is uh, usually put out as the uh, life of Calcutta or the undying life of Calcutta is for the most part temporary exuberance and nothing more than that. What is truly speaking on the basis of historical analysis is the life of Calcutta or represents the life of Calcutta, is the spirit of resistance to injustice and wrong that has characterized the history of Calcutta ever since the days of the Bengal Renaissance through the series of mass movements, people's move movement, the non-cooperation movement, the mass civil disobedience movements, the great August Revolution and so on. And of course, finally, the INA movement. All this shows that Calcutta represents essentially and truly the spirit of resistance to injustice and wrong and the fight to rectify or defeat injustice and wrong. And the best way we can observe and celebrate Calcutta centenary is to remember this lesson and see that Calcutta relives that history and restores to herself the spirit symbolized best by his life and action by Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, the spirit of resistance to injustice and wrong. Thank you.